Hi, everyone. I'm Jamie Vaughn with How She Got There, a Next In podcast. And today I am with Cecily Johnson, who is the Vice President of Engineering for Automax. Hi, Cecily. How are you? I'm great, Jamie. How are you? I'm doing great. Now, we always start off our podcast with two questions. Where did you grow up and what did you think you were going to be when you grew up? I love this question. Um, so I grew up in Livermore, California, okay. um, the Bay Area. And um, I moved to Omaha, Nebraska in 94 uh, to start my education. Wow. Um, as a child, I was really excited. I wanted to be an astronaut. Um, very, very intrigued by STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, I come from a family of engineers. So it was really um, intriguing to me to, to really dive into, you know, the atmosphere and, and just the, the sky's the limit. And so I was really interested in how to become an astronaut, wanted to be one. Um, and that's really it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So what was the change going from California to Nebraska? Um, I was, I, I'm a very independent soul and I wanted to go and spread my wings. And so I wanted to, um, you know, branch out and leave California and try something new. Mm -hmm. um, I did get into a few at universities and then chose to attend Creighton University um, because my parents are alumni. And oh, okay. so I wanted to carry on that tradition. Um, so I decided to come to Omaha, Nebraska. First time I had been there. So it was really interesting. And um, now I'm here. I'm still here today. Yeah. 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 I chose my dad's college as well. So completely oh. understand that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would love to hear about the educational journey of when you moved to Nebraska, started your education and how it took you into technology. That's a great question as well. So um, I actually started off at Creighton. It's It's got a medical background in science. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to Creighton to become a pharmacist. Oh, um, yeah. Loving science and technology and math. Um, but I was really, really into the science. I loved physics, I loved chemistry. Um, and so I wanted to dive into into pharmacy. Um, I did one semester and immediately changed my mind. I realized that I wanted to be in the business. Um, mm -hmm. I had a good sense of business, not only that, but um, wanted to jump into technology. Um, tech was not a big um, area or an avenue for a female. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, of course, being who I am, I wanted to um, dive into it and see what I could do. So I um, started to uh, I focus on a degree in MIS, Management Information Systems. Okay. I really wanted to be a leader. Um, and help guide others in their career paths, making sure they had the career opportunities, um, also the mentorship and the coaching, um, mm -hmm. some of the things that I was given in my career that I wanted to make sure I was able to pay forward. So it really wanted me to focus on, you know, how I can do that and bring that forward. Mm -hmm. So graduating college, what was your career trajectory after that? Um, so after I graduated college, I actually was an intern for two years at Conagra. Um, and so I, I really enjoyed working for Conagra um, as an intern, did that for two years. And then after that, I jumped into Ameritrade. Oh, wow. Yes. Jumped right into Ameritrade um, shortly after I graduated. Mm -hmm. um, and I started ground up um, and worked, started in data um, and start, helped build their data repository. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there, I moved on to uh, Union Pacific Railroad, and that's where I put a lot of my time in, I had about eight years of my career. Um, and that's where I started jumping into the deep tech. Wow. Okay, so now you go from Union Pacific and you're at Automax now as a vice president. And what was that like? I mean, what was your trajectory of going from, you know, from that intern at ConAgra into being a vice president? That, that takes a lot of guts to you know, really push yourself forward like that. Yes, um, I would say that I really kept focus on what I wanted to achieve in my career. And I'm still not there, to be honest, Jamie. I thought that once I became that VP, I would be good. But with my, my drive and my aspirations, I still want to keep going. So um, I just, it's interesting because as I journeyed through my career, um, I really wanted to make sure I had, I, you know, a lot of people had said to me, hey, you really had some strategy behind your moves. And I said, absolutely, absolutely. Actually, I haven't had any strategy behind them. Um, a lot of these opportunities 
were something that I was was presented to me. So I was able to really dive in and get to know just the different areas of tech. So I have slid across everywhere from data to security, to networking, um, to application development, to infrastructure and operations. And now I'm in a, in a place where I really love, and that's engineering. I love to create, I love to build, and I love to make sure that we can bring something to production intuition so it's very nice i love the fact that you said you're not finished and you're not where you thought you were going to be i always tell people i don't know what i want to be when i grow up because yeah. when you get there you're like this is my dream job and you're like oh well maybe not i love what i do but you know there's there's something else what's that next step i can take absolutely yeah so how do you keep up on the latest trends in your um career path um so i i read a lot of white papers i read a lot of articles i I'm very, very focused on my network. I network a lot. I talk to a lot of CIOs, CTOs, um, COOs, CEOs. I make sure that I'm very connected. Mm -hmm. um, so I am constantly meeting with them for lunch, um, after work, for dinner, to make sure that I'm staying um, aligned and also mainstream. So I spend um, time also at conferences. Um, but really, the meat of it is reading articles is really diving into the tech and knowing what's out there and what's happening. What are those predictions for 2023? You know, making sure that I'm focused on those, you know, looking at the digital um, immunity of infrastructure and engineering and how do we get there um, is, is really what I've been focused on today. Okay. So tell me about what Automox does. So Automox is an endpoint um, security patching um, tool that, okay. um, that, um, is focused on making sure that all devices are secure um, and we are cross-platform so um, that's what's really cool we're we're very unique in what we do um, and we're definitely the competitive advantage in our field okay so like is it an extension that we can download and put into our computers or is that something that the company needs to bring in and put in the mainframe um, it actually is, yes. So what it is, is it's a, a piece of software that you can actually go ahead and it's an agent that you install on your device. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we offer things like free trials and so forth that can actually help you dive in and get to know how the product works and make sure that's something that you want to bring in. We have customers that will focus just on their Mac OS. Some will just mm -hmm. focus on um, their Windows OS. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely are, are a great company and I'm so, I'm so glad to be here and be part of the engineering team. Nice. So it seems like there is a hub of technology there in Omaha. We are growing. Yeah, we're getting there. Yes. Um, one one thing that I've been really focused on, Jamie, is building the tech here actually a little mm -hmm. deeper. So we tend to focus on certain languages here, .NET, Java. Uh, we have some Python, but I really want to make sure that we're focusing on some of those next gen um, languages that actually have been out in the market for you know 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. and so we utilize a language called Go. Golang. Okay. And it's used by Google and Microsoft, etc. Uh, Meta uses it. Um, and it is definitely that next breaking technology, I think, for Omaha. So what I've been trying to do is really make sure that the my connections here, my networks are understanding where that development's going so they can start modernizing their infrastructure, their technology, and their tech stack. What I'm seeing today currently is that we are a little behind um, in some of the technology here, meaning that we have a, a focus of if it, if it works and it's not broken, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, we are now at a point where we need to start thinking about being seamless, scalable, mm -hmm. cloud first. Um, so that's what we've been really focusing on in, in the Midwest. And so bringing those technologies to help get us there are really important in the education around them. Mm -hmm. So tell me what a day in the life of the vice president of engineering entails. So I've been in my role now since June of 22, and it has been very busy, but so exciting. Um, every day is every day is a new day, especially in startup, right? You never know what you're going to encounter right. the day. Um, but really, I'm focusing on the vision, having a clear vision and clear requirements of what we're trying to accomplish here at Automox. So I've been building that roadmap um, and very part partnering hand in hand with our product. Um, as well as our architecture and making sure that we have a really sound operation. Um, so I've been really focused on making sure that we have people 
people first. I'm very people first leader. So making sure without people, you don't have technology and you don't have processes. So making sure that people, we have the right talent pool, um, which I'm so glad we do. And now we're building on how we move that technology forward with this, with this crew. So I'm very excited about the group that I have um, been able to uh, mentor and coach, and I can't wait to keep building them up and moving them forward. Okay, so I would love to hear some career advice or lessons that you've learned to give to our audience. I get asked this question a lot, and I I have two of them. One of them that sticks with me um, was a leader I had at um, Union Pacific Railroad. He said to me, Cecily, the best thing you can do in your career is work the ground from the ground up, mm-hmm. work your way to the top. He said that you are going to be able to relate, understand, and be able to nurture your your um, teams that way. And so he's absolutely right. Um, Jamie, I worked very hard to get where I am today, mm-hmm. and I'm so proud of the accomplishments in all the work, all that hard work is paying off. I'm able to relate. I'm able to understand what pain points are going through um, in many facets of technology. So it's been very valuable to me and that sticks to me. And I always pass this, that same message on, you know, I always say work hard, play hard. Um, right. The second thing um, one was is that you cannot change culture overnight and you can't even really change it in a year. Mm-hmm. So, and it takes all of us, everybody to be engaged in changing culture. So that's one message that I have um, been really, you know, focused on making sure that every position I'm in, that we talk about that because there's opportunity to fix culture in every company and make it better. So making sure we're working together as a team to do that. That's great advice. So how do we get more young women, maybe coming out of high school, deciding what path they're on, or women who are in the middle of their career, deciding on a career change, how do we inspire them to look at technology as a career path? It's going to take people like you and I to do that. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, It's about getting into the schools. It's about making sure that we're starting at a younger age. It's I'm working on trying to get development classes into some of the elementary schools here. I want them starting earlier. So talking Mm -hmm. through that, starting in my my district um, and then trying to branch out from there. So Um, making sure that we're talking about how exciting it is. And it it doesn't have to be coding. It doesn't have to be, I mean, there's other areas. Um, Mm -hmm. You can do things like you can lead teams, you can be a scrum master, you can be a product manager. There's so many awesome positions in tech, which I love is that tech is really turning into, like the the position of a CTO is really turning into that chief officer of Mm -hmm. understanding the technology, but it's very important that they can also be able to move a crew forward. So talking through those, you know, life challenges, life experiences with them. So they understand this is how exciting it can be. So also adopting um, a person, right? So I, I try to go in and we have some local um, chapters here. I come and I talk about tech. I talk about how I got places. I talk, you know, and then I always make sure that you can reach out to me. A lot of the individuals do. They reach out um, and they want to have conversations. I just had one last night. It was so great. So things like that, just making sure we're talking about the beauty of tech, how tech is really the future mm-hmm. and how it's driving the change, the changes we're experiencing today. So what inspires you? And it doesn't have to be anything in technology. What inspires me? I like challenge. I really like to be in challenge. And I like, I like, I think challenge brings opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, So I love that. But what inspires me in my day to day is, is being with the people I love, Mm -hmm. people that love me, Um, knowing that every day I wake up and I give my best self every day I do. And no matter what I'm experiencing in my life. So I love that I have such a strong unit around me that's able to help me to do what I'm doing. If I didn't have that unit, Jamie, I would not be where I'm at today by no means. I've had a lot of support um, and been able to have a family and a career. That to me is so inspiring. Just being able to feel like you have it all, right? Um, Yes. And then how you take that and make sure that you're you're paying it forward. Mm-hmm. So that inspires me. I like to pay forward what, what's been given to me and what I've been able to accomplish. Yeah, that's great advice. So if someone wants to get in touch with you or with Automox, how would they do that? Um, so you definitely you can you can email me directly. I'm okay with that. 
Um, or you can also go to automox.com and look at, um, get on their website. We've got things like where we have demos um, weekly of our product. Um, we also have free trials that you can download off our website. So there's so many great things like that you can do. But but I am one of those leaders that have I have an open door policy. Mm. Um, I will do what I can to answer. If not, I will have someone help me get in touch with the, the individual. Um, but you can definitely email me directly. Um, I'd be willing to share that with you, Jamie, if you'd like. Okay. Um, or you can go ahead and go through our website. All right. Sounds good. Cecily, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us today. And everyone, if you love this chapter of how she got there, make sure to hit subscribe below. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Jamie. This is great.